Hey up everyone and welcome back to this ultimate guide to high access to higher education. Today's session is going to be on mitosis, which is lesson five in the series, and it's also answering the second part of the scene test for the introduction to cell biology unit. So today we're going to do two things. We're going to look at explaining why mitosis is important for cells, and we're going to look at the key stages in the process of mitosis. Uh, not a great level of difficulty on this topic. Uh, and in fact, to put your mind at rest, we're only talking a few sentences for this first uh, question or part of the question. The second part of the question is going to be the bigger section. And really, we're going to be looking at four to six diagrams, little diagrams with some bullet points at either side. So without any further ado, let's get into learning about mitosis. Now, before I answer the question on the test, it's fundamental that you understand what the term chromosome means. Now, a chromosome is simply a strand of DNA. A strand of DNA. Granted, it's a long strand of DNA and it codes for a lot of different things about you. Essentially, it's a strand of DNA. Now, back in the day, and uh, it's lovely to think of this back in the day when your father's sperm met your mother's egg it created you for the first time so the sperm plus the egg made you and that would be your first cell that would be your first cell of which then you you grew and became the mass of cells that you are today. Now, your father's sperm had 23 chromosomes in its nucleus. So the sperm cell that fertilized your mother's egg had 23 chromosomes in it. And likewise, your mother's egg also had 23 chromosomes in it. And when they combined, when the forces combined, they created you with a cell of 46 chromosomes. And every single multiplication or every single growth from then on has copied those 46 chromosomes. And that's what you see happening as the fetus grows inside a room for the young for the midwifery students okay so we can basically see if that's our first cell then that cell replicates into two and these two cells replicate and these four cells replicate and so on and that essentially is becoming a cell mass which you can sort of start detecting on on uh, on scans etc now some cells will start then to differentiate some cells will start to become a heart some cells will start to become brain some cells will start to become muscle until you start forming a, a uh, human form if you like now what tells these cells to become heart or muscle or brain well it's actually the chromosomes that are inside that cell now each cell has the same chromosomes in it so if I took this cell and I took this cell it would have the same chromosomes in it it would have the same 46 chromosomes in it and every one of your cells bar the sex cells has those same 46 chromosomes in them it's just that certain chromosomes are switched on certain chromosomes switch so chromosomes are switched off some are speaking heart some are speaking muscle and they're doing the jobs that they're meant to do but the idea is that that first cell was given its 46 chromosomes to start with and every ever since then you have made cells with exactly the same chromosomes in so right now in your body if you took a cell out of your bicep or muscle in your arm uh, 
and you took a cell from your big toe on your left foot they would have exactly the same chromosomes in them so now you know what a chromosome is it's now possible for us to sort of address this first question which is explain the importance of mitosis and very very simply put mitosis is important for growth and repair mitosis is the process by which those chromosomes those 46 chromosomes inside a cell replicate and are passed on to two daughter cells that is how our cells grow or that sorry that is how our cells um, pass on its genetic information from one cell to the next that's how we're able to repair our bodies when they need refreshing or when they're broken down and that's how we grow from being one cell to the trillions of cells in our bodies right now mitosis is specifically related to the copying of chromosomes right there's a different process that happens when the cell actually splits in two and i will explain that but for the purposes of the first question to answer the question as simply put the importance of mitosis is for growth and repair or mitosis is important for growth and repair now we may um you may use an example of you know from going from one cell to the trillions of cells that we are now in terms of the growth but cells are replacing themselves all the time and when we talk about repair it could come down to replacing red blood cells you know we're able to donate and we're able to receive uh, red blood cells be or erythrocytes if you like because our body generates them naturally and we generate them really quite quickly another example of repair would be the stomach lining now the stomach lining has to replace itself every week or so um, because it's such a hostile environment it's very acidic it can it, our cells get damaged very quickly and therefore we have to replace them to make sure that the stomach stays intact um, in terms of other cells if we were to cut ourselves for example in the epidermis of the skin those skin cells need replacing and that's how that's what's happening in terms of repairing our cells so to cut a long story short for the first question of this second question if you see what I mean or first part of the second question the importance of mitosis well mitosis is important for growth and repair it's important for replicating the DNA or the chromosomes in a eukaryotic cell it is responsible for replicating or making an identical copy of the DNA or the chromosomes that's important uh, and we start from one parent cell and we end up with two daughter cells why is that important well it allows us for example to create or replenish the red blood cells or the stomach lining or uh, you know breaks in the epidermis of the skin for example and that's you know a full answer to the first part of the question so here's a source that i found with a reference at the bottom if you're interested uh, which just identifies uh, the turnover time for it, the time it takes for the cells of different parts of the body to uh, to replenish so this is um, for the whole for uh, the whole cell of that particular part to refresh and so I was on about last slide about how long it takes the stomach lining to replenish well you can see there that it takes between two and nine days so for the whole of the stomach lining cells to 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 make another one you can see that it takes two to nine days um, interestingly enough what we've got there tongue taste buds 10 days so your taste buds refresh every 10 days um, you've got the lining of your trachea or the windpipe one to two months um, 
what else have we got there red blood cells takes four months for the red blood cells to completely uh, refresh itself um, cardiomyocytes which are um, muscle cells in the in the heart and it, originally it was thought that muscle cells in the in the heart didn't actually replenish themselves i believe so obviously you can see 0.5 to 10 percent per year actually does re refresh itself now the only reason why i'm telling you these is you can see that um cells obviously take different amount of time to replenish the whole system um, mitosis actually is quite steady in how long it takes a cell to actually go through mitosis which we'll talk about later but when you're explaining the importance of mitosis it's hoped that you could use these as some of some examples potentially in your answer just to show how um, uh, important it really is for the human body okay it's now important that we talk about the different stages of the cell cycle because mitosis is only one part or one stage of the cell cycle and when a cell is created when a new cell is created it's quite small there's the nucleus there's the cell membrane and so we've got a small cell and for its lifetime this cell will grow and grow into a bigger cell and what's happening there is the dna is being used to create all the organelles that we talked about or you should be talking about in the other aspect of the cell biology unit so uh, the organelles will be created like the mitochondria and the endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosomes etc etc cytoskeleton blah 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 so this cell or any cell spends most of its time growing in terms of its in, in terms of its life okay it, it, it spends more time of its life growing and we call that phase interphase that is the growth phase of a cell now it, it's not mitosis this is not mitosis this is the phase before mitosis happens it's the growth phase so when a cell is actually ready and big enough to go and it's healthy enough to go through a splitting process it then starts to go into mitosis and there are four stages of mitosis which can be remembered by the acronym PMAT peed on a mat lovely image prophase metaphase it's a P unfortunately my handwriting doesn't get better digitally or with a whiteboard marker anaphase and telophase or telophase those are the four stages of mitosis so technically in your answer to the question the second part of the question of the second question so question two part two all you need to do is explain these four stages prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase if you want a bit of extension work and if you want to explain interphase you are quite welcome because this is important in a cell's life, cy life cycle so the cell or any cell spends most of its time most of its time in the growth phase when a cell is big enough and strong enough and ready to do so then it's able to go into mitosis and replicate and what happens is these 46 chromosomes make a copy and we split them and that copying and splitting them is as a result of these four stages prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase now when a cell actually splits so remember we've got the cell membrane around the nucleus so here we've got 46 chromosomes in the nucleus and the actual cell splits into we've got an extra 
stage at the end called cytokinesis or cytokinesis. That's the actual splitting of the cell, which we'll go into into one of the future slides on this PowerPoint. Okay, so as an introduction then to mitosis, a cell spends most of its time in the growth phase. It's busy doing whatever it needs to do. It's growing, it's building all these different organelles. So it becomes healthy and large and um, useful. And when a cell reaches an optimal size and an optimal um, healthiness, it then triggers mitosis, it replicates. It rep replicates using four stages of mitosis, which is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, which ends up from one cell of 46 chromosomes, creating two separate cells with 46 chromosomes after the cell goes through a process called cytokinesis, which means they split into two, clear as crystal. So a common question from students when we teach um, this topic is how long does mitosis take? Well, if you want, if you're interested, you can click on this link down here or type it into your web bar and it will explain how long mitosis takes. If this is a continuum of the life cycle, so this cell is born here and it splits or cytokinesis here. This is when the, the 46 chromosomes are created and we split into two cells with 46 chromosomes in. Then the whole process takes 24 hours. So from one cell being created to it splitting into two usually takes about 24 hours. Now, the interphase, so when the cell is created to when it's big enough to start splitting is 23 hours so that gives you about a, an indication of how much time a cell spends growing in relation to mitosis so if a cell was uh, was created over here it would over a 24 hour period be an interphase over 23 hours and only after 23 hours would the cell then go through, start going through mitosis and cytokinesis. So it takes about one hour to complete prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So that gives you an idea of the difference in time scale between how long a cell spends growing and how long it actually spends going through PMAT and C. How, how, how long it takes. So now we're going to delve into um, what happens during mitosis. And actually, as the title of this slide suggests, the magic starts happening at the end of interphase. So as the um, cell is getting ready to, to go into mitosis, the magic starts happening. And it's really important as a starting point to imagine that what we're talking about here is to the 46 chromosomes inside the nucleus. A lot of uh, learners forget that, of, about the cell membrane around the nucleus, around the cell. So we're going to really focus in on what's going on in this nucleus. So if I draw the nuclear membrane, this is the nuclear membrane. So this is this then what we've got are 46 chromosomes 46 strands of dna and 23 of those would be from your mother 23 of those from would be from your father or paternal so let's draw one two three four now 
obviously there would be 46 of those i don't have enough space for them so we're just going to draw four for now two blue two red doesn't matter really um and what actually happens at the end of interface is that they make an exact copy so in this nucleus there's lots of hustle and bustle and they create strands of dna that are exactly the same so what happens is let me draw an exact copy excellent with a black dot in the middle which i'll explain in a second and a lot of this when we're learning about mitosis and meiosis in the future is about terminology about terminology so what we've got here <clears throat> is that each chromosome at the end of the growth phase starts making an exact copy and we call these exact copies sister sister chromosomes not daughters that would be a daughter cell these are sister chromosomes and on this diagram we've got four pairs of sister chromosomes we've got one pair two pairs three pairs and four pairs of sister chromosomes all right they're identical copies of each chromosome and they're held in the middle by this black dot thing called the centromere the centromere it's very important that you understand that even though they are sister chromosomes so these two blue lines here what we're pointing to are sisters so there's two exact copies of uh, dna this is classified still as one chromosome this is classified as one chromosome this is classified as one chromosome and this is still classified as one chromosome so we still have 23 of these and 23 of these and so we would say at the end of interphase we've got 46 chromosomes however each has a sister chromosome attached via a centromere because what's going to happen is these chromosomes are going to split eventually and make an exact copy and so we can then go into the, the first stage of mitosis which is prophase so prophase is the first stage of mitosis and it is the stage where most of the stuff is going on there is four things to remember when we're talking about prophase now we have just drawn chromosomes in a long and thin form we've just drawn them sort of noodly with a black dot in the middle i.e the centromere long and thin chromosomes we refer to as chromatin long and thin chromatin now what happens as you can see in this first point is that chromosomes condense and by that we mean that they sh they become short and fat they pack up and wind in because they're not really needed anymore into something called chromatid Cro matted form so the chromosomes go from long and thin to short and fat that's the first thing to note well, let me delete that so if we have the nucleus here i'm only going to draw two this time we have one here and let's draw one here so that's the first thing that's happened the chromosomes have basically become short and fat they've condensed now 
this is the first time that we're going to encounter something which I'm going to draw green at the top and these two things are called centrosomes now remember this is the nuclear membrane this black line around the outside is the nuclear membrane it is not the cell membrane so this is still inside a cell and what happens in terms of number two centrosomes move to opposite poles of the nuclear membrane so these two green things move down to opposite poles of the cell that's number two <clears throat> and these two green things here start basically it's a little bit like spider's web they they start spindling out these spiders web and they attach the spindle let's say onto these chromosomes now you've got to imagine there's going to be 46 of these chromosomes in this nuclear membrane I've only drawn two there's going to be 46 I'm just trying to simplify it okay so that is the spindle these purple lines coming out and attaching onto those two chromosomes and then what happens is this nuclear membrane starts breaking down so this black line around the outside out here let me change that just to give me forgive me that I'm choosing a white but my delete would delete everything so the fourth and final point is that that nuclear membrane would start breaking down I hope you get the picture so prophase you've got a diagram right there that's all the diagram that you need with those four bullet points so metaphase is the second phase of mitosis and in this sense the M for metaphase stands for meat it stands for meat not meat as in steak and mince it means meat as in meat they are meeting and essentially what's happened is that these two centrosomes have moved down to the opposite sides of the nuclear membrane and what they do is they spindle out that purple line that we drew on the last slide and that those purple lines basically push and pull these chromosomes into line I suppose you could call it down the halfway line of a football pitch this might be the halfway line of a nucleus and so you can see hopefully that these two chromosomes are aligned down the middle which is technically called the metaphase plate the metaphase plate and that's where they meet and now I've only drawn two chromosomes but really there are 46 there 23 blue 23 red now they're not blue and red in real life I'm just giving them blue and red and so the 46 chromosomes would meet up down the metaphase plate moving on to the third phase of mitosis then anaphase I like to think that the A stands for apart and this is when the sister chromatids are split apart from each other so we've got the two centrosomes at each side they've attached spindle to each of the sister chromosomes and this is when we get the spindle pulling them apart so we've had them lined up down the middle down the metaphase plate and anaphase in this stage these chromosomes are being pulled apart and it is the first time that these sisters 
are now referred to as their own chromosomes. So you'd have 46 chromosomes down this side and 46 chromosomes down this side. Uh, 23 red on one side, 23 red on the other, 23 blue on the other, 23 blue on the other. And so what you get is an exact copy on one side as there is on the other. The only thing, the only bullet point that you need here is that the sister chromosomes are pulled apart and drawn to opposite centrosomes. So the fourth and final stage of mitosis is telophase and the T you could say stands for together because what happens to those chromosomes is that the centro <coughs> centrosomes pull the chromosomes towards them <coughs> excuse me into opposite sides of the nucleus and what happens is a nuclear membrane starts reforming around each new set of chromosomes so you have 46 chromosomes over here 46 chromosomes over here now these are nuclear membranes don't forget so we've, we're still inside a cell membrane and that cell membrane starts to elongate and starts to pinch in the middle all right so this is the cell membrane around the outside So as the cell elongates, finally it's time for the cells to become two. And what we have, or what we are left with, is two cells with exactly the same DNA inside. Where do both cells then go? Well, you probably guessed it. They go into interphase, both of them, and they start growing. And when they're ready, they'll go through the same stages as what they's just happened, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and they split again, and, and so on and so forth.